Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Guide to SolidWorks. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is this Model Mania activity from 2001. Um, I have currently got a few of the Model Mania activities on the page, so if you're interested in them, um, I'll put a link in the top corner to the videos, uh, tutorials as well, um, and you can access them and have a look through to your heart's content. Um, <coughs> what we're going to do today is take you through the model and process of this uh, tutorial and then we'll have a look at phase two halfway through and we'll look at how we're going to model that and uh, do some alterations. So let's talk through this one first, how about how we're going to go about modeling this and then um, we'll dive into it. So the first thing I'm going to look at is this back plate. I'll be uh, creating that first. And then I'll be creating this um, section here with this 45 degree angle away from the base there. Um, once I've created that, I'll be putting in this um, sort of cylindrical extrude here. Um, finishing then with the um, rib that follows through here and the two counterbore holes at the back there. So that's the process that I'm going to follow. Um, uh, and hopefully you'll follow along with me and have a go as well. So let's dive into this and get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to pick is a plane to model on. So um, I'm going to pick the right plane here so I can view it from the side. I'm going to sketch on that right plane. Now I'm going to start off from the origin and I'm going to draw a line for the back plate. Uh, starting from the origin going straight down. Now I'm going to set that distance um, for that back plate at 64 down. So I'm just going to dimension that there at 64. Like so. Okay, now I've got that dimension in there. What I want to do now is extrude this. I'm not going to draw out the shape, I'm literally going to extrude this line. So I'm going to go to features and extrude. And what this allows me to do is use the thin feature here. Now, first of all, I need to set how far I want it to go. So I'm going to go from the mid plane and it's going to extrude 96 across, like so. Um, currently, it's going in one direction, coming forward. So I want it to go back. So I'm going to flip it around and it needs to be 20 thick. So I'm just going to change that to 20 there. Okay, and you can see just from that one line, using the fin feature, I've now got that back plate size. Take that, like so. Okay, so again, going onto the right plane, I'm going to sketch. I'm going to turn this on the side, so I can see it from a side view. I'm going to sketch this profile in here. So I'll start by roughing it out. Starting from my origin, coming forwards and up, like so. Now, for this, I've got um, the center of the circle or the cylinder that would come down here. So I'm going to put a center line in for where that should be. Coming out the center of there. Okay, so I've got that position in there. Um, what I'm going to do now is use some dimension tools, start setting some sizes to this. So I know that to that is going to be an offset of 45 degrees which is picked up perfectly there. Um, I know my distance from the end of here to the bottom of here is going to be 64. And I know the distance from The 
back face of here to the front face of here is going to be 100, 146. Okay, now what I've just done there is I've locked that to the midpoint. Let's unlock that from the midpoint of there. Okay, so that's not fixed to this midpoint of that line, it's just fixed to this line. Let's see if I can delete that relationship. Okay. So that line and that line have a coincidence relationship. So let's get it out like so. Lovely. Now at the moment, this is set along this line a random distance. Now I do know the distance from here to the end. And the distance from there to the end is going to be 32. So from there to there, it should be 32. So, now knowing that, um, I also know the full length in which this is going to extrude out. Um, and that full length in which this is going to extrude out is the 12 thickness of the material plus, plus the 32 of the cylinder. So it's going to be 44. There. Lovely. Okay, so now I've got that all fully dimensioned. Um, I'm going to put in the radius here. Now there's a radius here of 15 milli. So on that corner, I'm going to put that 15 milli in there and tick like so. So we've got that 15 milli radius in that bottom corner. Now I'm going to use that same extrude function as before. So I'm going to go to extrude. Now this time I'm going to reverse it so that I'm coming down and I only want to come down 12 mil, like so. Okay. However, I want to go from the mid plane on my thickness across and I want that distance all the way across to be 64. Let me take that. Okay, so you'll notice there's a flat top end on this in, in the um, model it's round, so we need to round that off. So I'm going to go to fill it, I'm going to go to rounded fill it, click there, click there, Ooh. I'm going to go between the boxes, uh, so click the side, then click the end in the second box, then in the third box the other side, and that will round off that top edge for us. Okay, so at the moment we're looking good there, um, what we need to now do is add this uh, shaft in. So I'm going to click on that face and I'm going to sketch and I'm going to add a circle in here. So if I run to the or hover over the outside edge of the circle it will bring up the centre of the circle here. If I click into there and drag out and drop that there. That just allows me to um, line them up with each other, the two circles, so they're concentric. Now, the diameter of that circle is going to be 52. And then I'm going to extrude that out. So, features, extrude. And that's going to come out 32. Lovely. Okay, so now I've got that on there, I just want the hole going through, so I'm going to sketch on this end face. And again, I need to find the centre of that end face, so just hover over the circle, find the centre, and draw that in to um, a diameter of 32. And then I'm going to cut that straight through all of the model. So all like so and tick there okay so at the moment I've got all of the external shape and what I need to do now is this rib and also the two uh, counterbars in there so let's start off with the rib 
So I'm going to go to the side view, side on view there. Using my right plane, I'm going to sketch onto that. And I am going to take the contours around the bottom of here and offset them. So I'm going to take that line, that line, and that line, and offset them by 26 mil. 26. And I'm just going to change the direction. So I'm coming out here. There we go. Now you'll see that the line goes through the circle here. I don't want that. So I'm just going to um, click the end of this circle here. Convert the entity on that. Change it to a construction line. So that's now a construction line. So it won't take any notice of it when we try to do our feature in a minute. And just trim off this excess line. So I'm going to just trim off that bit there, back to that construction line. Okay, um, what I'm also going to do is put a center line in from my origin down to the bottom of here. And from there I'm going to put a circle in that's tangential to this line and connects to this line. So circle, I'm just going to drop it anywhere in there, make it coincident to that. And then I'm going to make it tangential to this line here, like so. Now you'll see it's still under defined because it needs a diameter, so I'm just going to dimension that up. Now in the model it's got a radius of 55, so 110 diameter. That leaves me with a few excess lines, so I'm going to trim some of these lines away. So trim tool. I like to use trim to closest, but you've got a few different options of which ones you might want to use. So I'm going to trim that section away of the circle, I'm going to trim this line away, leaving me with a profile there for my rib. Tick. I'm going to go to features and I'm going to go to rib. Now it's given me an example rib in here. Now I'm going to set this to the same thickness as this top bar, which is 12. And I want it going both sides because at the moment that's down the center of the model and then tick there and we see we've got now our rib down the center of that model now I'm going to put my counterbores in here at the end so I'm going to click on this face um, I want to find the hole wizard tool so the hole wizard tool here at the top Okay, so I've got the whole wizard tool open. I'm going to use my counterbore option here. Make sure that I'm set at metric. And my size that I'm using is M6. So make sure we're set onto the M6 size. Now I'm going to use the standard uh, hex bolt. But it's up to you which one you wanted to use. Hex bolt is probably most appropriate for this. It doesn't specify in the model. So I'm going to use the hex bolt. Now... I need to position these, so if I go to the position option here, underneath the uh, hole wizard tool, and I'm just going to drop two in, one in either side, like so. Now I've dropped them in, I can start to relate them to things. So first of all, I'm going to relate them to each other across the centers, I'm going to make them horizontal. Once I've done that, I can set a height for them both, from the bottom there up is going to be 32. And the distance between the two is 60. Now that's not symmetrical to the center, so I need to do that. So I'm just going to put a center line down from my origin to the base there. Knowing that that is right down the center of my model. And then I'm going to offset one of these with a dimension of 30. Bringing them exactly 30 either side of that center position. And now the center point of them has gone black, which means now it's defined. Tick there. And I'm going to get my examples of my holes, like so. Okay. Now, once I've got my counterbores in, I'm just going to finish off with the fillets. Um, uh, 
before I do the fillets, I'm just going to set material for this. There's no material currently set and not in the options. So we go normally. Um, let's see. Normally we go into our favourites here, playing carbon steel, and we'll use that material for this model. I'm just going to do my fillets. So if I go to the fillet option here, and I'm just going to have the con constant size fillet on the end. And I want that fillet to be 2 mil. So it's a 2 mil fillet on all edges. Now, the way we're going to go around doing this is I'm going to select that face there, which will pick all the fillets around the bottom. And I'm going to select this face here, which will relate all the fillets on this inside edge as well. Now, what you'll find is it might struggle to pick up this inside fillet here. So if I click that line, you'll see it probably is not going to work. Yeah. Now, it's not allowing me to do that fillet along there in the same fillet as the others. So it's not an issue. All we do is we take that edge out, complete that first fillet. Oh. Is it going to let me pick up on it again? Let's have another go. So, fill it there. Fill it there. Okay, let's have another go from start. Two milli fill it. Select the face at the bottom. Select that face there. And now it's allowing me to do it. Tick there. And then I'm going to add the other fillets in with a second one. So, fill it tool again, make sure we're still on the 2 milli, and I'm going to go down that side and around, and down this side and around, like so. Okay, and we tick there. Now just so you can see where the fillets are, I'm just going to uh, set an appearance to them. And I'm just going to turn them to an orange colour, like so. So you can see that nice and clear. You can see where we're meant to have them in relationship to the original drawing. Okay, so that's stage one completed. Um, so we've got our model for stage one. Now the next part of this would be to modify it. So let's have a look at how we'll go around modifying this model. So on phase two, there's some small differences, um, nothing major, but just some small ones. So for instance, on here now, my angle of uh, 45 is going to change to 55 through here. Um, uh, my distance up from the center here is no longer going to be 64, it is just now 45. And I think that's all we've got to modify. Yep, it's looking like it. That's all we've got to modify. Now, what that one will do will change this um, offset on our rib. So we might need to do some editing there. We'll need to edit our fillets as well. So it's not going to be a massive change, not going to be a massive modification. So let's have a go and add these changes into our model. Okay, so this is the current model. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is roll it back. So if we use our blue bar here, roll this back to somewhere around there. That'll do the job. So now we've got our side in this top section here. Okay, now I'm going to edit this. So if I drop down and go to my sketch here and edit that sketch, turn it to the side view so I can see it side on. Okay, so what I've now got here is rather than 45, I want to change that to 55. So I'm going to have a 55 degree angle there. My distance at the side here, rather than being 64, is now going to be 45. Which will just pull this down and back across slightly. Now, what that's showing us is that this line is effectively extended and this one is shortened slightly here. We're still going to have the same um, 
shaft coming down, we've just changed this top line. Now if I come out of that sketch, and it will modify that model for me. Now if I drop this down now, it's going to put that fillet around the top edge, drop it down again, and we're going to get that um, cylinder coming out. We're then going to do the cut through, and that's followed through to the inside edge. We're now going to look at this rib. Now, the rib tool has just followed along with the original profile because I took the sketch as an offset from this. It's automatically um, updated the rib here to suit. So that's one thing that's quite cool about SolidWorks is that it is parametric and will edit the model along with you. We've then got our counter bar. They're both in, back in exactly the same spots. And then we're just left with our fillets. Now this is where we can generally find that it's probably not going to work. So we've got an error here on this fillet. So if I right click on there. Oh, not playing along today. There we go, right click on that fillet. Edit the fillet. Now it's picked up this inside face here. So it's saying it's missing face too. The reason for that is because if you look at the rib, there is a flat section on here that's no longer there. So face two is now gone. So I'm going to click on something else and see if it picks up the edge for that. So it's picked up that inside edge there, like so. Now we might have to do a little bit of extra modeling for it to pick things up on this one because of the fact that that flat face is no longer there. But we've clicked them two sections, it's picked that up. And I just want to see if it'll pick these bottom edges up. And the same on the other side. Okay, so it's missing out that bottom edge there. So if I just undo that last selection. And we've got that last selection there, um, just to add into the last bit. So tick. We've got them in place, like so. So I'm just going to modify this last fillet, edit that fillet, so that I'm also getting in this inside edge and around here, like so. Okay, tick there, drag that down, and we've now got our finished model. So let's have a quick look at this in relationship to the drawing that we started off with. So we've now got um, our modified shape, all our fillets in place, back plate, and our cylinder sticking out the bottom there. Okay, so that's the full walkthrough of how we do this Model Mania 2001. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you've taken something away from that. And um, please have a go uh, at completing the model um, and practice. Um, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Um, if you enjoy the content, like the video, please. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Um, so, yeah, nice to, nice to see you. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.